Uh, hi, uh, I'm Dr. Deepak Megu and today I'll be sharing with you a case about a 70-year-old man who had sustained blunt trauma many years back. Now he has an intumescent cataract with around 3 to 4 clock hours of zonal adhesions. So I begin my case by doing two small paracentesis. At this stage, I am not sure uh, that whether there is vitreous prolapse or not. Uh, I am using trepan blue as little as possible to stain the uh, anterior capsule. So once the staining is done, I am just trying to remove the air bubble. At this moment, I see there is some amount of uh, trepan blue which is egressing out from the area of the zonular dehiscence and I become suspicious and I'm now injecting a diluted triamcinone acetate to check for the presence of vitreous and as we can see there is a tongue shaped vitreous which is prolapsing from the area of the zonular dehiscence. So the first thing to do in such a scenario is to ensure that we do uh, antivitrectomy and remove all the prolapsing vitreous. We can't proceed with the vitreous prolapsing out like this. So using a very low flow rate and high cut rate, I am doing anti-vitrectomy to ensure that the vitreous is cleared off. The high cut rate and very low flow rate ensure that we don't cut the iris in the anterior capsule and they are prevented from damage. I am plugging that area of zonal dehiscence by using a dispersive OVD And again, I'm replenishing it with some more amount of dispersive OVD. Under this, I'm using a cohesive OVD, sodium hyaluronate, to, to push back the entry capsule so that I can get a rexis done easily. Here, I'm creating a scleral tunnel. I plan to do fake holes through the scleral tunnel, and also, I plan to do a past plan anterior vitrectomy for the prolapsing transzonular vitreous. Uh, and this peritome is going to help me for that. Uh, during rexus, I realized that the rest of the zonules are quite healthy. The capsule rexus could be torn quite easily. So using a uh, micro forceps, I'm aiming to do a rexus up about 4.5 to 5 millimeter. The smaller rexus is going to help me to achieve optic capture if the need arises. And the rest of the zonules look to be quite healthy in this situation. So the excess is completed without much of an issue. So again, I'm always checking for the presence of any vitreous and uh, I insert a capsule, a capsule hook to engage that area with the zonal adhesions. I'm making another side port for my, to introduce my chopper. Again, I'm using dispersive OVD to block that area. And here I'm using sodium hyaluronate to create some space underneath the entry capsule so that I can find it, make it easy for myself to implant the CTR. So now I'm implanting the CTR and the space which I've created helps me to insert this in a very easy and a controlled manner. I always support the ring with my left hand using a Sinsky hook. And the last part of the ring is dialed in by using another Sinsky hook. And invariably it gets stuck in the hole and I use the other Sinsky hook just to release it. So once the uh, ring is in place, the bag looks to be much more stable. And my strategy is to do a direct chop. So once I bury the phaco tip into the nucleus, uh, I'm trying to chop the nucleus and realize that it's quite dense. My right hand is stable and I'm just trying to use my left hand to separate the nucleus and try to uh, break the posterior fibers. I rotate the nucleus again and again the tip is buried and I'm proceeding with my vertical chop. Again, the strategy is here to keep my right hand stable and try to 
uh, separate the fragment using the left hand. The difficulty in eyes with these loose backs is that you don't have the counter traction which is so helpful in uh, separating them because the tensile strength of the bag is not much here. So anyway the half of the nucleus has come out and the fragments are being emulsified quite easily. At this stage I realized that the hook has got disengaged from the capsular pack. Uh, but the bag looks quite steady and safe. So after injecting OVD, I remove the hook and I also found that there is a tag of the vitreous band which is prolapsed again through the area of the zonular defect. Uh, going back with my biminor vitrectomy to cut that vitreous band, I am again injecting dispersive OVD in that quadrant to block uh, any further prolapse of the vitreous. The remaining hemi-nucleus section of the nucleus is again gently rotated in the bag. Again, it's important to keep the bag formed. I'm using HPMC to keep it formed here. And again, as I'm trying to chop and laterally separate, you can see that the lateral separation of the posterior plate is quite challenging because of two obvious reasons. One, the nucleus is obviously slightly denser. Second is we don't have the the counteracting force which would help us to chop it much more easily so nevertheless we're trying to we are achieving this chop so after each nuclear fragment is emulsified i make it a point to go back again and inject my dispersive ovd in the area of the zonular dehiscence and also i keep the back formed by using a two percent hpmc this is the, the final fragment, a huge chunk of the nucleus which is there. So again the same principle, I'm keeping the bag formed here using HPMC and again chopping the nucleus. So it is now the final two fragments are emulsified quite easily. And finally, I think the job seems to be well done and I'm relieved that the nucleus could be emulsified eventually. White plaque which you are seeing behind the posterior capsule actually is the vitreous which are stained with the, the triamcinone acid which we had used and we can see there is still some amount of vitreous being uh, prolapsed to that area. At this point, I thought the best way to tackle this is by using by using a pass plan approach because we can access the vitreous from behind and then do a decent anti-vitrectomy. So, 3 mm from the limbus, I make a sclerotomy using AMVR plate just behind my steril tunnel incision which I had created. And again, using my 23G cutter and infusion through the uh, anti-chamber parasynthesis, I proceed to do a limited anterior vitrectomy. Uh, care is taken that I remove all the vitreous which is there adjacent to the area of the zonular dehiscence. And also I am cautious that I don't damage the posterior capsule. I am just doing a limited amount of anterior vitrectomy. There is no need to do uh, overtly enthusiastic and removal out of vitreous. So just enough to ensure that it doesn't prolapse through the zonal dehiscence. And at this stage I am closing my sclerotomy using a 10 o using a 8-O vitreal. Now is the time to implant the lens. I am using sodium hyaluronate to create some space. The plan again is to implant the multi-piece lens with the haptic in the sulcus and then trap the lens behind the excess margin to achieve an optic capture. So I find, I thought that this case is ideal again for this technique. So first it's important and critical that we go back behind the lens and remove the OVD which we have used it. 
and once the sodium hyaluronate which is there behind the lens has been aspirated now I come back and aspirate the OVD which is in front of the lens once the sodium hyaluronate is removed now we need to tuck the lens back posteriorly I'm using my sense cube to push the lens back posteriorly we can see that the right hand side of the optic is gone behind the excess margin and now I'm tucking the trying to tuck the left side of the excess margin inside and once it is done you can see there is some amount of a vitreous which is again prolapsed to that area so the last final time I'm using my vitrector to do vitrectomy and you can see the ovalization of the rexus which is suggested the fact of the optic capture we used pilocarpin to constrict the pupil I'm not happy with the, the side port incision I found it to be leaking so I'm using ten of vicryl to suture that area that's it the job is done well it took 40 minutes for me to complete this case so the first post-op day as expected uh, there was some central corneal edema stromal edema was seen but the pupil was round and uh, i'm sure this edema was going to clear up so one week later the patient is happy and we have a clear cornea by this technique of trapping the lens uh, with the haptics in the sulcus and the optic in the back, I find the phaco denosis is very much less compared to what it would have been by putting the entire thing in the back. Well, I have been using this technique of uh, trapping the lens for the last couple of years and it seems to work very well in select group of patients who have got localized areas of zonal adhesions. So far, so good. Thank you so much for watching.